All right, everyone. Happy Math Crush Monday. Um, we are talking about whiteboards tonight. So what are the math expressions whiteboards? How are they different from other whiteboards? Um, how should we use them? How do we keep them? What's their purpose? I'm going to give you all the details tonight. So if you don't know who I am, my name is Shannon Keebler. I am the moderator of this Facebook group. And I have planned or taught every single lesson in math expressions from kindergarten through sixth grade. I know the resource very well. I do not work with publisher. I work completely independently, just helping teachers just like you across the nation implement math expressions well. So most trainers that you get uh, have never taught in the classroom, or they have very limited experience in the classroom, or they have never taught with that curriculum. That's what makes me different. I have taught with math expressions for years since... Uh, 2009 uh, and have worked in every copyright since then. I work very closely with Dr. Karen Fusen, and I'm no longer currently in the classroom, but I spend generally about a week to two weeks um, a month in classrooms, just like yours, coaching alongside of you, teaching model lessons, so on and so forth. So enough about me. Let's get started with whiteboards and let me know in the chat if you're watching. I would love to just say like say hey what grade are you? I'll talk about your grade level of course tonight but I just love to know who's watching. If you're watching the replay just say replay. Um, it's always helpful to see who's here and to know that I'm not just talking to myself. So as we look at whiteboards let me show you a little bit about what we have. Um, so what we know is this, when we build concepts with math expressions, we do a build, write, or excuse me, a build, draw, write strategy, meaning we want to build. So you can see here that we have some manipulative work um, with our secret code cards, our place value blocks. We're using our red and yellow counters. Then we work on drawing. OK, so there's specific math expressions, drawings, and most math curriculums have drawings. But in expressions, they are unique in terms of their specific place value drawings. You can see here a circle is one, a 10 stick is 10. We do a hundreds block for a hundred. Okay, so the drawings are really specific. And then we do models as well, comparison bars, math mountains, so on and so forth. So the drawing part is a really big part of our lessons. Um, in fact, I oftentimes say, I want you to use the whiteboard to start the lesson. We're going to build understanding using the whiteboard. Then we're going to go to the workbook and we're going to apply our understanding. So even though you may start your lesson and in the teacher's guide, it's showing you the workbook page. It doesn't mean we teach from the workbook. We teach from the teacher's guide. And I oftentimes will use workbook problems or whatever the teacher's guide problem is they're telling us to use. And then we're doing that on our whiteboards. So the whiteboards really are like the main tool. So as you can kind of see, the whiteboards are also um, not very uh, sturdy, meaning they look something like this. You can say I've kind of written all over this one. Um, they're flimsy. Now, if you're in the earlier copyright of expressions, then you also got like the hard bound, like the whiteboard one. They don't make those anymore. But these ones are intended to be consumable. I mean, yeah, consumable, meaning that you can get new ones every year that you order white, uh, excuse me, every year that you order student books. Okay, so if you're ordering workbooks, these are supposed to come packaged with them so that you get a new clean whiteboard every year. So as you can see, storing them in desks is generally not a good idea. Although I know several of you have said in our, some recent posts that you like fold them in half and then you stick them in their desks. Well, it's not a terrible idea. It does give a crease right down the middle, but it does make them flat and they stick right in there. Um, I just prefer to have them stacked in, in generally like four corners of the room or in tubs right outside of each table group so that when we need them that, you know, this table group goes to that side of the room and this table groups goes that I don't like lines of kids. I think it's a waste of time. I don't like handing out whiteboards one at a time. I think that's a waste of time. So as much as I can do where it's even like this stack gets passed down this row and this stack gets or whatever. OK, so I like to make it really efficient because I use them so often. So as you look at this particular image, I just want you to see that there are different white boards. So this is the part that right now at the back to school, when we all get our supplies, sometimes we don't end up with the right materials because people just don't know what they're supposed to have. So if you are in the 2018 version of Math Expressions, that means that you are going to have whiteboards for kindergarten. In 2013, 2015, 2009, those copyrights do not have a whiteboard for kindergarten. You won't have those. But this is what it looks like for the kindergarten for 2018. It has the purple tiles on the front that are like an outline of them. And then it has pictures of Math Mountain templates on the back. 
if you are in grades one and two, now the rest of these are no matter what copyright you're in, it's the same. So grades one and two, you guys have a number path around the outside. Now, the number path is so important. It is way better than a number line because in a number line, kids count the tick mark. So even though it's zero, there's a tick mark there. And so kids start counting one at zero, even though we're not to one till we get all the way to one length, right? So a number path is different. When you get to one, there's only one box. So it's a really important counting tool, number one. Number two, we're going to use it to make a 10. We're going to use it to do count buys in third grade. We're going to use it to um, add on and count on in first grade and in second grade. We're going to use it to make our 10 sticks and count by tens and then by ones. We're going to use it to round. So this number path is extremely important in grades um, K through four. OK, so don't not use the whiteboard because it is the scaffold. It is helping students to do whatever that grade level content is, even if it's much as kids are like, well, it's a 36. But I can't remember how to write that one. And they're looking on their board for what does that number look like again? How do I write it? Okay, it's going to help with place value. There's just so many ways that we can use the number path. Right. So. When we see grades one and two, they're going to have the number path on the one side. And then on the other side, you can tell it's not here, but on the other side, which you can see on my screen, it's an inch grid and then it's two a hundred dot arrays. So this is on purpose because first and second grade are working on place value drawings using the quantity, like circling one dot, that's one. Circling 10 dots, that's 10. Now draw a line through it. You have a 10 stick. They're going to use the inch grid to do uh, comparison bars. They're going to use the inch grid to do graphing work. And see if I have it here. So you can see here, these first graders are working on their teen numbers. So this little friend is doing 16. You can see he did a group of 10, and then he did six extra ones. Then he counted them to see if he could figure out how to write the number. He got all the way to 10, so he knew that one was 10. Then he had six more, and he knows 10 and six equals 16. Now, the dot array is the same thing. He's going to use the dot array to show him the quantity. This is how much it's actually worth. So the back of the board is still pretty darn important um, in grades one and in grades two. Then you get grade three, and grade three still has the number path. In fact, in grade three in unit one and two, you are going to use this number path every single day because it's how we teach multiplication and division. It's how they start to commit their facts to memory. So if you're in grades four and five and you're using my fluency routine that we teach in grade three, you're going to use the whiteboard. Same thing for that. Bring it out. Kids are going to remember how to use it. So when we say in grades four and five, they don't know their math facts. How do I get them on their math? facts, I'm going to say, well, the first step is to at least make sure they have the whiteboard, because if they have this whiteboard, they're going to be reminded, oh, yeah, I can find any math fact if I have my count bytes. So it is, an, a, that's how they learn multiplication division. It's an important tool. Don't take it away from them in fourth grade um, and then tell me they don't have their facts. Like this will jog their memory. Oh, yeah, I do have a strategy. The back of the whiteboard in third grade is a dot array. Now, both third and fourth grade have dot arrays. I know it's hard to see on this image. The third grade dot array is much bigger because you only do really single digit multiplication divisions versus when you get to um, fourth grade, look how small those are. The first of all, they're gonna be making a thousand picture when they do quantity drawings in unit one. Then they're going to be using this to do the area model and place value sections. And we're envisioning what quantity is, not just doing an algorithm or a step-by-step -step procedure. They're gonna actually see that number of dots or squares inside once they use this part of the board. So that's the difference between third and fourth. Third grade has large dots. It's only a 40 by 25 array versus on the back, it's 100 by 100 for fourth grade. Then you have fifth grade, and I don't have an example, I don't think, a fifth grade right here. But fifth grade, you can see right here, it has a hundredth bar. So this is a decimal bar that we're going to use to count by tenths and hundredths and to see fraction and decimal equivalencies. So instead of having a kid like draw this, which would be horrible to watch, okay, they're going to use the hundredth or the decimal bar on the front of their whiteboard. The back of their whiteboard then is all of their fraction strips. No one wants to watch a kid draw sevenths or fifths. Okay, so this is a scaffold where kids are using this to end split, which is like finding equivalent fractions. They're going to use it to compare fractions. I mean, so much fraction work is done on the back of the math expressions whiteboard. So this is what the fifth grade board looks like. 
And then last but not least, sixth grade, they work on a lot of ratios and proportions and coordinate grids. That's what their board looks like. Okay, so they're going to use both of these templates to help specifically in that unit rates, proportion, ratio, all of that. All of that work they do, they're going to use this part of their whiteboard. So when we look at whiteboards, it's I know we have like the small little ones we can get from like Office Max or even Home Depot cut the shower board and they fit so nice and neat in their desks. That's great for just general math work, but I would really suggest you use the expressions whiteboard as your math whiteboard. When we're doing math, we use the big ones. It's just going to help students have the right tools on the board that they need. It's big, so as students are doing their work, you'll notice they actually start like uh, doing larger work, which is important because so much of math expression is about sharing work and having your whiteboard up in front of the room and talking about what you did and comparing it to someone else's work. And that's so difficult when you're in a notebook, a white uh, workbook, um, a small board, because the smaller the space, the smaller you write. Now, can we put it under like a document camera? Of course we can, okay? But there's just so many benefits to the whiteboard, um, including revisions, what we found um, as this has been studied is that kids who are in a workbook or a notebook, they take less risks um, in math class because they tend to think it has to be a final draft. It feels more permanent when they're in a workbook versus in a whiteboard, they would try new things. They would use multiple methods. One, they can't see how many problems there are to do. So they're more committed to the one problem you're working on. And two, they have more space and it feels like it's easy to erase and to change your mind. In a whiteboard, in a workbook or a notebook, not as easy, right? So we're going to build understanding on the whiteboard. We're going to then apply the understanding when we go to the workbook. So I'm curious what questions you have or what you just heard that you're like, oh, I didn't know that. So post in the comments below. I want to know um, what you maybe learned or a question you have about your particular whiteboard, or even better than that, what tools are you using or how are you organizing it so that it actually works in your room? Because I recognize they're not super friendly tools because of their size and because of their flexibility. They're harder to use at the carpet, you know, whatever the case may be. So that's how the whiteboards work. We want to hear from you below. We want to hear how you're using them, how you're storing them, or something that maybe you didn't know that you just learned about whiteboards. All right, my friends, that is what we're talking about tonight. Let me see if I can get us to um, our quick feed here to see if there's any questions. So let me know below. If you're here, just say hello. Um, I hope you're having a great start to your week. I know so many of you started back to school this week, last week, and then the rest of you, you have one more week before you start after Labor Day. So thanks again, everyone, for joining us. We will see you online. And then let us know below if there's any other topics you want us to cover as you get started with back to school season. All right. Bye for now.